Welcome to Engineering Studio with Dr. Mohammad Tahir. In this video, we are going to solve one design example for compression members. So the question is: Design a truss compression member using single angle connected through longer leg. The dead load is 110 kN, live load is 140 kN, both are compressive. Length of the member is 3.4 meter and the steel used is A36, mean with the yield strength 250 megapascal. So here we have we are given with the information that it is a compression member and it is a truss member truss compression member so when we say it is a truss member so it means k value is equal to 1 because we assume that or we consider pin joint in case of truss members so k will be equal to 1 so kx as well as ky both will be equal to 1 so let's start the design problem so first we need to calculate the Design load or the factor applied load. So factor applied load is equal to PU 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. So 1.2 into 110 plus 1.6 into 140. So we have this 365 kilonewton applied factor load. So after calculating the design load. we need to calculate the required area so to calculate the required area first we need to assume the slenderness ratio for the section so initially we can assume the slenderness ratio for a single angle section equal to 150 so the r assumed is equal to 125 okay so after assuming the r value we need to calculate phi cfcr and then when we have phi cfcr we can calculate ag is equal to pu over phi c fcr to calculate phi c fcr we need r value and we also need to check whether this r value is more than the critical slenderness ratio or less than critical slenderness ratio if it is less than critical slenderness ratio it mean we have inelastic buckling otherwise there will be elastic buckling so critical slenderness ratio is given by this equation 4.71 square root e over fy so 4.71 e is 200000 and fy is 250 so its value is 133 for a36 steel and our assumed slenderness ratio is less than this value so it mean it means we have a section with inelastic buckling okay so if there is inelastic buckling then we can calculate the phi C, uh, fcr value by using this expression here fe is given by pi square e over kl over r square so KL over R is our assumed value, 125. So we need to substitute the assumed R value and E value to get the FE value. So FE is 126.2 megapascal. So we need to substitute this value in this expression to get the FCR. So 0.658 250 over 126.2 into 250. So its value is 109.1. So FCR is 109.1. So phi FCR or phi C FCR is equal to 0.9 into 1 0.9.1. So it means phi well factor is 0.9. So when we find phi C FCR, so it will become 98.19. Okay, now we have phi C FCR value, so we can calculate the required area by dividing the applied factor load over with the phi C FCR. So PU over phi C FCR. PU is 365. It is in kilonewtons. To convert it into newton, we need to multiply it with the 1000 divided by phi c fcr. So it will give us the required area of the section. Okay, here we once we have the required area, then the next step is to select the suitable section, and we select the suitable section based on three criteria. The first criteria is it should have area more than the required area. its width should be more than the b minimum and it should have least weight out of available options so one more thing that we need over here to investigate in our case when we have a truss member so k is equal to 1 and lu is equal to l because we have no bracing in between so kx lx will be equal to kx ly k ky ly because k value is 1 in both the direction and lx and ly are equal to l in both the x and y direction because we don't have any bracing 
So here the scenario will become that kx and lx mean the effective length in both the direction is same. We also need to calculate the b minimum value. B minimum is 2.5d plus 16 if one leg is connected and it is stated in the example in the statement that connected through the longer leg. It means only one leg is connected. So when one leg is connected so we can use this expression and its value comes out to be 53.5 and here we assume that the rivet or the bolt used is has a diameter of 15 millimeter. So at this stage we have three informations or two sorry three information the first one is area for which we need to select the section the area selected should be more than area required b should be greater than b minimum 54 and kx lx is equal to ky ly it means on both the sides or along both the axes we have same effective length so we need to select or we can prefer a equal leg section because the slenderness ratio will be same along both the axes if we select a equal leg section when le is same about x and y axis so r should also be same about x and y axis and this is only possible if we have a equal leg section when we have equal leg section then le over r in x as well as y direction will be same so we will have e a section which is strong equally strong about the both axes so we can conclude that we need to select a section uh, equal leg section with area greater than area required b greater than b minimum and having minimum weight out of the available options so if we go into the properties table so here we can see that our required area is 3625 so if we see this table here the area is 49412571654454137 and 32 so it means our area is in between these two values 32 and 37 so 3624 is close to 3710 so we can select this section this one angle section with legs 152 by 152 and thickness 12.7 so this will be our selected section so from the selected section we can note down the values area 3710 we also need this r value in x direction it is 47.2 similar will be the value in y direction 47.2 because it is the equal leg section similarly we need this value y it is 42.7 and x it is also 42.7 mean the distance from the centroid centroidal distance x as well as y similarly we also need rz rz which is 30 so 30 42.7 and 47.2 30 3710 so we need this information so we have selected this section angle section 152 by 152 by 12.7 and it has ry R, R x is equal to R y 47.2 R z 30 and area 3710 and if we talk about x is equal to y is equal to 47.2 sorry it is 42.7 42.7 millimeter so once we have this information now we need to perform the checks so the first check is the b should be greater than b minimum and in our selected section we have b 152 because it is a 152 by 152 by 12.7 so the leg dimension is 152 in both the direction or for both the legs so it is more than 54 so it is okay so now we need to perform the instability check or we need to perform local instability check so for that slenderness ratio b over t should be less than lambda r and lambda r when it is a axial compression member so we can select from this table so legs are single angle so for that we need to select this value so 0 0.45 square root e over fy so it will be 12.7 
and b over t 152 over 12.7 it is 11.98 it is less than lambda r 12.7 so it means it is okay the local instability check is satisfied okay after that we need to perform the global instability check for that we need to determine the slenderness ratio r value in x direction in y direction in z direction and we also need to correct the slenderness ratio or we can say we need to find corrected slenderness ratio about the axis which parallel to the connected leg if this leg is connected so parallel to this axis our slenderness ratio parallel to this axis we need to modify that or correct that value to accommodate for the lateral torsional buckling so for that first we need to calculate slenderness ratio about x axis y axis and z axis so l over k l over r about x axis and y axis will be same so k is equal to 1 l is equal to 3400 and r is equal to 47.2 so it will be 72.03 so this is l x and l means slenderness ratio in x direction and in y direction so similarly we need to find the slenderness ratio about z axis so that is k l over r about z axis so k is 1 l is 3400 and r z is 30 so it is 114 Okay. Similarly, we also need to find the slenderness ratio, corrected slenderness ratio. So here, in case of this equal leg section, so we have longer leg connected, so both legs are same. So we can say this leg is connected. So that L over R. So L we will consider the total length, and R will be considered about this axis, x axis. So we can consider R x. So L over R x total length divided by R x. so it will give us this factor our slenderness ratio 72.03 if this slenderness ratio is less than 80 we can use this expression 72 plus 0.75 lc over ra so it will become 126 it mean corrected slenderness ratio is equal to 126 okay now we have three values of slenderness ratio the first one is 114 rz the second one is rx and ry which is 72.03 and we have r corrected which is 126 so we need to consider the largest value out of these two and that will be the critical value so if we can see so 114 72 and 126 so this 126 is the largest value which is corrected for torsional buckling So this maximum slenderness ratio or governing slenderness ratio should be less than 200 to ensure the global instability. So this check is also satisfied as it is less than 200. So now we need to check for the capacity capacity of section. So to check the capacity of section, first we need to see whether the section will have inelastic buckling or elastic buckling. So for that we need to compare R maximum with the critical slenderness ratio. So R maximum is 126 and it is less than 133. RC is 133 for A36 still. So it means we have inelastic buckling. So once we have inelastic buckling, we can use this expression. So here F E is equal to pi square E over K L over R square. So K L over R here will be 126. So by using this expression. we can calculate fe and then 5 cfcr so its value is 96.8 megapascal so once we have 5 cfcr then we can calculate the capacity so 5 c pn is equal to 5 c fcr into area of the section so 96.8 5 cfcr multiplied by area of section so it will give us the capacity of the section so it is 359.8 kN and it is more than 356 kN so it mean okay our section is adequate to resist the applied load so now we need to check the loading cycles if it is less than 20000 so it mean it's okay no need to consider for the fatigue design otherwise we need to consider the fatigue as well 
so our final section will be l152 by 152 by 12.7 so if i summarize so what we did in this design problem we calculated the applied loads then we assume the slenderness ratio and compare it with the critical slenderness ratio if it is inelastic buckling then use this expression to calculate the phi cfc fcr and then phi cfcr so once we have phi cfcr we can calculate area so the next is to select the section based on area b minimum and we have one more information that we can prefer a uh, equal leg section as the unsupported length or effective length in both the direction is same so based on these three informations we can select a trial section note down the properties of that section then we need to perform the checks so first we need to perform the local instability check lambda is equal to b over t it should be less than lambda r so lambda r will be selected from this table and if it is less then it's okay then we need to check for the global instability for that we need to calculate slenderness ratio about x y and z axis and we also need to calculate the corrected slenderness ratio for lateral torsional buckling so to calculate the slender corrected slenderness ratio about the lateral torsional buckling we need to first investigate the slenderness ratio about the axis parallel to the connected leg so once we have the slenderness ratio l over r about this axis parallel to the connected leg we can calculate we can compare it with this if it is less than 80 we can use this expression to calculate the corrected slenderness ratio or otherwise the second expression is given in the code so we can follow that expression and we will get a uh, modified or uh, corrected slenderness ratio so then we need to select the highest slenderness ratio out of four mean lx uh, rx ry rz and corrected slenderness ratio then compare this highest slenderness ratio with 200 or our highest slenderness ratio should be less than 200 for the global instability so if this is satisfied then the next step will be to calculate the capacity of the section to calculate the capacity of section again we need to compare it with the critical slenderness ratio if it is less than critical slenderness ratio then there will be inelastic buckling and we can calculate fcr by using this expression phi c fcr and then phi c fcr multiplied by area of section it will give us the capacity of section if it is more than the applied load then it is okay it mean our selected section is adequate to resist the applied load without any local as well as global buckling